In La Rochelle, the Student Yachting World Cup has already reached its second day, and after three exhilarating races yesterday, the championship is definitely producing thrills for both sailors and spectators. The skippers from each team have their daily briefing, receiving the details on the day's racing format. But let's hear one of the competitors explain it to us too. Today we did two windward lured courses, uh, bananas as they call them here. So just uh, a quick windward leg, one and a half miles and downwind and then two laps and a quick reach to the finish. The first start of the day was given early, and Team USA was once more the first boat on leeward. Ireland, on the other hand, decided to tack very soon and headed to the right side of the course. In the end, it was the Italian team that managed to round the downwind mark first. But most teams' boats were very close to one another today, and much excitement comes from situations like this. Before too long, the sailors were completing the second downwind, riding the waves, enjoying themselves, and aiming to extract good performances from their boats. The Italians managed to keep their lead and rounded the last mark before heading to the finish line. They were followed by the British, who were unfortunately having problems with their jib and this gave the chance to the Irish to slip in to second place. The second race then started without any delay. This time, the Italians and the Poles started on windward and were soon tacking to head to the right side of the race course. The Canadians joined them also, trying their luck with the right side after a relatively bad start in this race. They were rewarded for this choice. They rounded on top at the weather mark, followed by the Swiss team that had picked up the left side at the upwind. The Canadians did keep their lead, however, and they were ahead of the Irish team that had by now managed to overtake their rivals from Switzerland. Part of the thrill of these races owes to the fact that these boats are so similar and so cannot significantly outperform one another. Often the distance between them is just too small, and naturally, positions change frequently during the race, making things all the more exciting. The end results are rarely certain before the very final phase of the race. After completing a quick downwind, the Canadians dropped their spinnaker and were heading for another bullet in this championship. The Irish managed to stay in second place, keeping the small overall point difference from their Canadian rivals. A coastal race was sailed right after the two windward-leeward ones, same as yesterday. This time, the boats had to sail upwind first and then downwind towards the Bridge of Ré, connecting La Rochelle with the island of Ré, as the boats were passing not once but twice under this beautiful bridge before heading back towards the port of La Rochelle and the finish line. The spectacle is astounding. When it comes to the overall results, the Canadians, however, remain in the lead. But the Irish are close and getting closer. Still, they're both far ahead from last year's champions, France, who at this point are in third place. Tomorrow, the forecast mentions light winds, but we're still a long way before the end of this exciting World Cup here in La Rochelle. So stay tuned.